gentlemen. It's okay. six o'clock. Okay. All right, folks. I'm going to call to order this meeting of the East Hampton Planning Board for Tuesday, May 17th, 2016. Is there anyone here to speak to something that is not on the agenda? Um, and, uh, David Boyle, the definition from 10.1 for uh, park protection. I'll just read it quickly. I want to ask you for your interpretation. Driveway is space located in a lot which is not more than 15 feet in width for residential use, nor more than 24 feet in width for business, commercial, personal, social uses. Now, this is the key part at the lot line. So my interpretation is that after the lot line, you can have you the lot. Is that correct? I require a reread. <laughs> what, what section are you yeah, in here? 10.1. 10.131. 10.13 general parking areas designation. Definition. And then, and you said so you want to know if you can go there we wider go. Okay, after the line. Right. Yeah, now what's the nature of the question here? It says, let me read the definition. It says, at the lot line, is the, I'm, I'm reading it is the width. Okay, if you read that literally, yeah. Space located in a lot which is not more than 15 feet in width for residential uses or more than 24 feet in width for business, commercial, institutional, or industrial uses at the lot line or for access to a garage or off-street parking or loading space. So I guess I'm asking is can you have a funnel? Feet, 24 feet from the lot line. I don't know that we can give money. like an advisory opinion on this. Well, no, I guess it's probably, it. yeah, That's we all. can, okay. That's all. I just yeah. wanted to well, We'll we'll check it out. Yep. Very Thanks, David. Can I, I'm sorry. I, I was trying. I was fumbling, yep. trying to get my act together here. So <laughs> I, I, my clerk is not here. I just want to know so. if, it, if, if, it's, if you read this literally, that you can go wider after the lot line. So you've been doing not more than 24 feet in width for business at the lot line. <laughs> I'm in total pain. Right now. Guys, Thank you. You could. Okay. You could go either way, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Was there somebody else here that had a public comment? Yes. yes, sir. Why don't you come up to the podium and introduce yourself to the crowd? What's Where do you want me to go? Can you go to the podium? <laughs> well, <there? laughs> that's an open Where question. Where do you want me to go? <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Only one answer? Good, Good evening. evening, sir. You know, I'm a senior. I'm 86 yeah. years old. <laughs> Why is it that you members of the board talk so quietly amongst yourself when this is supposed to be a public meeting? We're supposed to all hear you. So my challenge to you young people, Chet, that's you too, <laughs> is can you please talk louder so I can hear what goes on? That's my request for this evening's meeting. And Jessica, everybody should have a microphone. We do have a microphone. The system is, is that it records to the tape but doesn't amplify in here. That's the worst thing. Don't we have enough money? That's definitely beyond Stanford? our purview here on the planning board to get uh, microphones. Mm -hmm. But if you can't hear at any point, let us know and we can speak up. You're talking a little bit loud now. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I didn't know that was a problem, but that's <clears throat> good to know. Thank you for the it, feedback. Excuse me. Are, are you referring to when you're listening to your TV at home or when you're sitting here in the council chambers? Sitting Is it, right here. Sitting sir. here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I was I just wondering hear, if it's not picking up loud enough back there. I can hear there. you too. I got a big mouth. <laughs> no, I don't. No, you don't. But you know what the audiologists say? Females' voices are most difficult for us seniors to hear. I'm a <laughs> <laughs> And to you. I don't think I have a problem talking loud, yeah. Eddie. I've thrown you out of my so office so enough. The the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
All right, moving right along to the planning board minutes for May 3rd. Did everyone have a chance to look at the minutes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any changes, omissions, Not anything? Not for me. No. Yeah, I got a mistake. What's that? On page four. Hmm. It says, Harry asked what the cost was to file an appeal. It's cost, not cost. Gotcha. Can you just mark it up on that yep. version? Thank you. Anything else? A motion to approve the minutes from May 3rd with the aforementioned modification from Harry. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? I abstain. Thank you, Libby. All right. Um, no ANRs tonight, is that right, Jessica? No ANRs. All right. New business, uh, site plan approval for 84 and a half Cottage Street, Timothy St. John. Is there someone here to speak to that? Sir, you want to come on down? All right. Will you state your name and address for the record for us? Timothy St. John, 26 Maple Street, East Hampton, Mass. Thank you. So you want to give us a little description about what you're proposing here? We are proposing at 84 and a half Cottage Street to open up a small deli and sandwich shop. Um, there'll be no fried foods, no rendering of any animal proteins. Um, there will be no changes to the existing structure. Um, and I believe that all other resources are in place uh, for the business moving forward. Okay, and just to clarify, this was part of the um, off-the-map site plan approval a few months ago, right, Jessica? Correct. And we, and we had a description of something that might be coming in, and this is that something. Correct. So off-the-map, when they came for their permit, they were unclear on whether they wanted to do a restaurant or not, and I think in the end had determined that they wanted to do a tattoo removal um, location. So. The board had requested that they remove the restaurant portion of the description from the permit um, until they actually had a, a client in place that would rent the space and requesting somebody to come back to discuss it. Okay, and um, our department comments, uh, did you see this um, from the health department about a kitchen plan that they haven't, you haven't been to the health department yet, is that correct? We have not. We are in contact with the health department. They are the, I believe, the last department that we have yet to meet with at the site. Okay. Um, you folks have any questions at this point? Uh, sort of discuss some of the possibilities at the last meeting, although we couldn't get, uh, I should say the one, the meeting with regard to um, off the map. Right. But we didn't get into any of the nitty gritties. Trash removal. How are you getting rid of uh, trash? There is a dumpster on site that we will be able to buy into. Um, so we be, will be paying monthly to um, co rent that with the, uh, the off the map people. And I believe it's Joe, the building owner, it, it's under his purview. Okay. How about deliveries? Do you have expectations There's, about deliveries? We do. Um, although our, ex our, um, our deliveries won't be large, we do expect maybe three to four different deliveries a week. Um, there are double doors at the rear of the building that lead into the basement. That area is clear all the way to the storage facility that we'll be using underneath the, uh, the portion of the building we'll, we'll occupy. I don't uh, recall how the access works. Um, when, the, when their shop is closed, is there access to your portion, to your deli, or how, how does? When, when the the, the street side is closed. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, a third door. It's a completely independent um, space. space. Yeah. It's, it doesn't look like it's actually connected at all to the off, off the map. Is there any way to sort of access inside from your space into theirs? Yeah, there's a couple ways. The rear door to the building that we would occupy um, opens into a hallway, which is connected to what is the lobby of the old theater. Okay. Um, so there's that, and then there's also basement access to all all spaces okay um, and you mentioned uh, the only work you need to do is, is venting for the stove yeah and even that is under review at this point that we may be using an alternate cooking system where we may not even need to vent for the stove but if we do that's really the only work that and some of the minor plumbing that would need to be adjusted for the sink drainage okay 
and th there's some discussion in here about hours. It looks like your plan is to do 10 to 7 right now? It is. At seven days a week or? Seven days a week. Okay. Yep, that's current. And then plan. there's sort of a mention of possibly extending those hours. Would that only be if you got the beer and wine license? No, that would also be um, any time that the community has any um, opportunities that we could take advantage of that would be outside of those regular operating hours. Yeah. And also interior catering for um, any events that off the map may um, host in the, the rear of the building. Okay. Um, and other than that, that would be. So know. when you're when you're talking about, I think you mentioned like Art Walk and other things like that. Right. What do you expect your extended hours would be for an event like that? Um, my assumption would be 9 p.m. would be the, the latest that we would be doing that. And you expect that would be sort of uh, exceptional situation. You're not planning on doing that. Not on a regular on basis. On a regular basis. No. Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions? No, um, Let me ask one if I didn't hear it right. You had mentioned catering. Are you doing catering out of there also? No, well, the, the catering will just be s the small events that off the map hosts. They generally will have like a 10 to 20 people coming in there on a monthly basis. Oh, okay. Are, like, I their just guests. wanted to clarify that. Sure, sure. Um, and, and nothing unusual as far as like water use or any other city amenities, right? It's just no. sort of, okay. Is there a bathroom in that area? There is. Okay. Do you expect to have people eating in there, or is it all going to be takeout? Or the majority is going to be takeout. We do hope to have a small handful of people, um, but the the site is very small. Yeah. So once the design layout is done, we'll we'll see what we can do for tables. But we're not relying on too much seated service. Okay. Um, anybody else? I, mean, I think we've covered the site plan approval stuff mm -hmm. both on this and on the prior application. Um, do you guys have any questions? No. Anybody else here from the public have any comments or questions? You're working with a consultant, I'll just say that. Okay. Is that all you want to say? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Any comments, questions? All right. Planning department, any comments or questions? No. Not at this time. All right. Can I get a motion then? Uh, okay, 84 and a half, a half. Paddock Street. Motion to approve the site plan approval for 84 and a half Cottage Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And who second? Chet did. Oh, Jim made the motion. Jim made the motion. Okay. Chet seconded. <coughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm trying I'm to speak up. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any opposition? Abstentions? No. All right. All right. So. So the next step is I'll be drafting the decision within the next 14 days. And once it's time stamped by the city clerk, you're good to go. There's no appeal period. Okay. And I'll email it to you and stick a copy in the mail to you. Appreciate it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Best Thank of you. luck. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Next up, uh, special permit site plan approval for 184 Northampton Street, A to Z storage. Come on down. Good evening. My name is Bill Cannon, landscape architect. Uh, we're here before you tonight. Uh, I'm representing A to Z properties. Uh, Dave Boyle, Dave Boyle yeah. in the eye. So if you got any questions, um, he can probably help you just as much as I can on it. Um, but we're, uh, we're here before you tonight uh, asking for approval for amended site plans that were approved a couple of years ago for uh, the same site. Um, that site plan um, is this one right here, which basically uh, uh, was going to uh, rebuild uh, uh, onto and rehab and kind of severely or remodel the old motel building that was kind of set back on the site and we were going to retain the existing building if you're looking at the site from Northampton Street to the right. Um, that's that's the um, daycare center right now, right Dave? 
Uh, and uh, we went through planning board site, site plan approval. We also went through conservation commission approval for the project. Uh, that included submitting uh, plans for stormwater management uh, and complying with all the uh, zoning regulations. Uh, you can see, I, I'm just kind of showing this to you so you can kind of subtly remind yourself of, of what the site uh, looked like um, a couple of years ago. Uh, basically, parking um, uh, between the two buildings, uh, kind of a circular uh, uh, traffic pattern with the center of the parking area devoted for stormwater management and landscaping. We had access to um, refuse enclosure off, uh, off, off of a little spur to the side, left side of the building. Uh, the main entrance coming off of uh, Northampton Street was a divided uh, island uh, for the true way uh, traffic. Um, and so uh, what we were going to do was to, because of all the wetland constraints and everything else in the back half of the site, this was the most developable uh, part of the site and this is all we were uh, proposing to do and subsequently got approval for. So uh, fast forward uh, now, um, the client, Dave Boyle, had uh, some time to think about some other options uh, and uh, the viability of the, of the building design that was presented to you uh, back then and uh, wanted to kind of revisit uh, the design a little bit. They felt that the, um, a new building design was more in tune uh, to the model of their retail uh, 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 rental uh, leasing options and plus they, they wanted to kind of do a little bit more with, um, with uh, uh, apartment uh, rentals as well uh, for the second floor. Very similar, very similar kind of use uh, here where the retail uh, commercial was devoted to the first floor, ground floor and we had uh, eight units of uh, one bedroom uh, apartments on the second floor. So we have submitted plans uh, to the planning board requesting an amendment uh, to the site plan uh, for this uh, layout, basically um, taking the two buildings that we have on this site plan and um, <coughs> consolidated uh, into the back of the site where the larger building was into three buildings, approximately 55 by 66 feet uh, um, for e each building. Uh, we also are proposing to um, uh, eliminate this building as well, right here, uh, for uh, this design option with the three buildings. Uh, again, uh, a to Z Properties feels that this is a better model for their leasing options uh, and also um, I think uh, this would probably update their infrastructure. The, the existing building that we were going to keep is a little updated as well. Uh, but as you can see uh, from the two site plans in here, I like to kind of keep them holding up so you can, so can kind of see the differences in here. Um, the parking design, the parking layout, circulation is virtually the same, um, but because uh, uh, of, of the layout, we had an option and, and the removal of this building here, we had a, uh, an opportunity to, to, to kind of make the island in the, in, the, in the middle of the parking area a little bit larger, and so therefore could handle a little bit more stormwater management. Um, also, it, it's, it becomes a little bit of a larger landscape uh, uh, element as well uh, for the site. Um, <clears throat> where the existing building once stood, we are proposing to landscape that, so um, we've shown it on the detailed plans that were submitted to the planning board, uh, additional landscaping and street uh, tree plantings as well. <laughs> um, there are some subtle differences in the, the building square footage, uh, but virtually they're the same. There's only about a, a, a 1,700 square foot 
difference uh, from the old plan to the new plan, uh, uh, additional uh, uh, space, but most of that is kind of common space and won't be devoted for any kind of use. Um, and that was by design because at, you know, we, we kind of maxed out uh, the buildable part of the site. So we had, we had certain constraints that we had to kind of maintain from the original site plans. Uh, so we had to kind of maintain the same amount of parking. We have one less parking space than the previous uh, site, but we're well within the requirements uh, for the square footage uh, for uh, the commercial space and for the apartments, um, which is kind of the major difference where we were proposing eight apartment units before. We are now proposing uh, 12. So there'll be four units in each, each building in here for a total of uh, 12 apartments. Um, again, there's sufficient parking. They meet the zoning regulations uh, as, as well. Um, we still have access to refuse enclosure area off to the side over in here. Um, and as I mentioned, the parking is virtually the same. We're just, we're one less uh, space short. The access to or off of Northampton Street is exactly the same as what was approved previously. Um, the other slight little difference is that we had kind of a play yard put off to the side on our uh, previous site plan over in this area right here, but because of the new building uh, layout, we have located in, in the back of the building. We feel that, the, and this is going to be a play area for um, uh, the uh, child care uh, facility. So that's staying. Pardon? That, it's your intention that they stay. They're still yes. a part of this, even though the right. building's gone. Yes, I, I think that A to Z is, it will, will move them into one of the buildings once they're complete. So these buildings can be constructed because they're outside the footprint of the original or the <clears> existing <throat> building. So they'll build that and then move them in and they'll have this play uh, area uh, for uh, its use as well. Um, so there's a little bit of a, uh, a, a circulation system, pedestrian circulation around the buildings for access to the uh, entrances uh, to the stairwells to get up to the second floor apartments. That's all shown on the plan as well. Um, the landscaping is virtually the same uh, as the previous plan. Um, and as I mentioned before, we were able to, to uh, add a few more trees on this, on, in this side over here where the previous uh, Dacre uh, 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 building was located. Um, and uh, to, uh, with regard to utilities, I mean, we virtually have the same kind of stormwater management design as we had before. Uh, the, the, the three separate buildings presented us a little bit of, of a challenge in that we are sewering them, uh, each, each building individually, they'll connect to an existing sewer system that uh, goes down um, either property line here and services the apartments in the area. Um, so that was uh, addressed as well. The other thing that was addressed is that these plans were uh, simultaneously submitted to the Conservation Commission uh, for their approval for the modification and um, uh, review of the stormwater management uh, system uh, as well. And um, that was last Monday, I believe, uh, was, was uh, reviewed and they subsequently approved uh, the modifications uh, for um, the new layout for the storm drainage system, the stormwater management plan, and our, uh, our uh, concept for dealing with uh, uh, drainage for the site. Um, so that probably, I think, would, would speak kind of uh, highly to, you know, our attention to the details uh, on the site in here, and we believe we actually probably improved the site a little bit um, in updating all the buildings on the site and um, uh, anticipate uh, this being a, a better quality project than what was uh, previously envisioned uh, for the site. Um, let's see if make sure I just got everything um, just a cup just a, a couple subtleties in here since uh, the last project was approved 
the zoning bylaw uh, under section 8.12 of the planned business development uh, was uh, modified uh, from a five acre minimum for multiple buildings on the same lot. We now, um, that uh, was uh, reset to three acres. And we have 3.8 acres on the site in here, which accommodates or complies with the zoning uh, for the multiple buildings as well. Um, so the only other thing that I wanted to kind of mention to you, we submitted those plans to you subsequently because of the ongoing negotiations with the engineer uh, and the conservation commission, we had to make a few uh, slight modifications, uh, especially with respect to um, uh, addressing runoff from the roof. And we um, have uh, shown some roof drains and dealing with the roof drains uh, from the buildings and um, have accommodated, uh, you know, dealing with, with how they're going to be uh, drained. Uh, that was kind of a, a concern with the Conservation Commission um, and that was kind of addressed. And so we've shown that, we've revised the plan and shown that on the plan. The other thing, uh, the other item that was, um, uh, we had, we, on, their, on the plans that we recently submitted for amendment, we showed two park, handicapped parking spaces, and Jessica uh, was uh, <coughs> helpful in alerting me to the fact that we needed three. So we addressed that uh, shortcoming as well. We had three on the previous, the original plans, Right. But for some reason in the transposition and the revisions of the plans that we kind of lost sight of that in my office a little bit. So we we put that back into the plan. Where are they now? Uh, they're in the same location up in this area right in here. Um, again, they're shown on that plan. I, su I just submitted it to uh, Jessica and uh, we submitted uh, copies uh, back uh, to her that show the three handicapped parking spaces. So that meets the the uh, local requirements for handicapped parking for this number of parking spaces as well. Um, so I apologize for having to resubmit the revised plans of the revised plan. <laughs> it was a matter of just kind of catching up to, you know, what, what the Conservation Commission uh, needed for um, their revisions, but, and then plus this handicap uh, space uh, revision. Jessica, so is the planning department comfortable that they've met all the parking requirements? Uh, I know there's commercial, residential, and handicapped. Yeah, so as here. I sort of tried to put in the technical memo yeah. to the board is um, they were required to have 45 spaces um, based on the additional residential and the square footage for the commercial. They show 47. So, um, you know, as long as they can accommodate for those three handicapped parking spaces, I don't know how we interpret the handicapped parking, whether it's the ordinance, whether or it's just. additional to the baseline or whether um, as long as they're in there in terms of the mix, it's unclear. I went and tried to resolve that between the two ordinances because the parking's in the general ordinance, it's not in the zoning right. ordinance. Right. Um, but either so way, we're allowed to give a, a waiver on the plan. You can parking do a waiver under the right. planned unit development um, zoning. Right. So I, I think it's fine. It, it's common, it, it meets all of the standards. Okay. Uh, did we also get in writing from Tom, Tom to the planning board that they did approve the plan just we, to be on uh, the safe side, I guess? Yes, hold on. Wrong file. They submitted, I think I sent it to you, maybe I didn't. Um, I didn't get any department comments on this. Oh, you no. didn't? Uh -uh. No. Oh, sorry. My oh, bad. Yeah. My bad. Um, <laughs> So they wrote, Conservation Commission discussed proposed modifications, found that the changes are within the scope footprint and character of the original work, approved under order of conditions for Mass DEP file 151-276, no further permitting under Wetlands Protection Act required. Any other department comments? Um, no Jackie Duda had no concerns about the project and ZBA had no comment. Um, I know we talked about this last time with the with the project, but I'm trying to remember. So the, the plan is for the first floor to be commercial. Is it, is there going to be a retail component, or we don't know yet? Is that the idea? To be more office. That's the idea. Yeah. And then the second floor of each of the three buildings is where the residential units will be. Yes. And there's four extra residential units from last time, right? Correct. And the, you, oh, right. And the commercial uh, 111 
extra square feet. Does that sound right? It's slightly larger. Um, yeah. Well, based on some uh, calculations I did, we're about uh, yeah, 111. Okay. Somewhere in that range. Nothing more square okay. feet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Jimmy. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it, it's you know, there's a few more stairwells in, yep. in these footprints in here, a few more bathrooms, and so we we try to kind of take them out as common space that aren't really. You know, right. dedicated or required for the parking that. Yep. Cover. Okay. Uh, if memory serves, we did a site visit. Uh, yeah, we did. Yes, one. we did. And the building was dated. Uh, <laughs> so, so this change, I think, is overall a, a good thing for the community. Um, the uh, play area in the back, fenced in. Yes. How? Yes. How? What kind of fencing? It. Uh, I. It'll be a chain link, uh, probably vinyl clad. Uh, chain link so that it's a lower maintenance. Um, it's in the back, we'll have a lot of privacy. We didn't really feel we needed to put solid screen panels up in it like we did previously because it was on the side of the building. Is it your intention that the daycare would be in the center of the three buildings right next to it or do you know? Does yet to be determined. Yet to be determined. I mean they're they're all within I, I presume it would be either this one or this one in here. Because it's close to the play area. And it's yeah pretty yeah pretty pretty divided the distance is there any handicap access or ramps at the uh, commercial the first floor level for any of the three buildings uh, yes the the, the the handicap parking spaces um, uh, uh, are accommodated with adjacent sidewalks and they will have ramps so that they can get from the parking space on the sidewalks okay and from the sidewalks, they can get into the first floor of each building. They're slab on grade uh, type of construction, see? So uh, they don't have to have long ramps, uh, you know, to get up a, a typical height of a, a, a wood uh, type of construction, uh, you know, residential type of construction with a basement. So they'll, they'll all be handicap accessible, yes. What about uh, loading and unloading for the commercial spaces? Where will that take place? Well, uh, you mean as in loading docks per se? Or just, yeah, where will deliveries, deliveries, things like that? Well, um, again, it's office space. It's usually pr anticipated that's pretty low activity. Um, it can happen anywhere during, during the day. Uh, but the, the parking area, the parking circulation has been, des has been designed so that there's a loop that go comes in front of the buildings in here, which they can just pull uh, adjacent to. And they, if they need to kind of make a delivery like FedEx or something like that, they can just uh, park, uh, parallel park to uh, the sidewalk and there's sufficient room to get by. There's clearance uh, to have another car to pass yes. in there? Yes. Okay. You'd said that there are 12 residential slots in the in the upper portion. Is it your intention to divide for 12 for the commercial in the bottom two or less? Is it two in each or how? Uh, at the moment, each um, building has two office spaces. Um, but um, <laughs> someone could rent the whole space. So we're dividing more. It's, it's on bearing. Perfect. Uh, on the traffic patterns, there is. Is that meant to be a one-way loop, or, or is there going to be two lanes of travel, essentially, in each direction? Um, we had this, I think that uh, we, we had some discussion about this at the, at the last, yeah. uh, the, for the original site plan, and that we felt comfortable about a, a one-way situation uh, kind of coming around uh, uh, the parking area uh, from right then coming around left right. so that you can you can kind of enter here and go this way and kind of come around this way here right. um, it wouldn't necessarily stop somebody from kind of coming around this way if they wanted to get into a parking space because the driveways are pr plenty wide enough for two-way traffic so it's a little flexible uh, but uh, uh, we had signage and everything else that we'll put up to indicate that direction of the traffic and remind me again, I remember we discussed whether there was going to be a right turn lane coming out of there. That was yeah. Nick's. That was Nick's, is yeah, that right? That was, okay. that was Nick's, and um, you jogged my memory here. Was that, that was the state, wasn't right. it? Right. Yeah, it did okay. not, um, 
the, the 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 having you know three right three lanes was too wide, and they wanted to keep it narrowed down, which That's right. okay. I didn't mind uh, either. So we responded to the state requirements of just keeping it one way, one uh, one drive coming in, one drive exiting. Yeah. So just so I have it clear in the minutes, so you said that um, you, you're going to post signage to direct traffic to go in that circular route, but you're but you're not going to it's not going to be sort of mandated. Somebody could cut over. I just want to make sure I have it right. That's all. Well, th there's plenty of visibility around the, this whole parking area, so that they could kind of see if they, especially if it's somebody that uses the parking lot a lot, mm -hmm. that they could kind of bear to the left. In other words, they, they're, they enter into the site here. They could bear to the left and kind of come around at the parking instead of going all the way around. Right. But the signage is going to be directing them that way to go in that counterclockwise. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I thought we. I think we felt that, that was a, a good system to have. There. I think that makes sense. Yeah. What about lighting? <coughs> um, we still have the same ambitions for our lighting. Um, that didn't change except just kind of put, pushed apart a little bit because we made the the interior landscape uh, in the rain garden a little bit bigger. Uh, but uh, it would be uh, we would have poles that are shown on the site plan uh, located to light the parking areas and to light the travel ways as well. But they're they're hooded, right? Yes, the, the hooded light they're poles. Hooded. Yeah. Yes, right and. Uh, um, the zoning re um, stipulates that they should be no higher than 15 feet high. And all that kind of stuff. will you know, uh, so. Um, I see six will. in the main lot. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, four, five six. six. Eight. We've got eight, actually. There's two here. Yeah. Four. Oh, there's oh, two, two in the six. middle. Two in the middle. Eight. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're ten. right. We got actually ten, ten. ten lights over there. So did the buildings? And then there's the, yeah, there's lighting on the buildings. Yes, uh, there'll be. Uh, uh, well, there's always this wall part, wall packs, and everything else for the emergency exits and everything else. But the fronts will be properly uh, lit for accessibility and everything else as well. Uh, with with building mounted uh, light. Will there be lights on the back too, or just the front of the building? Um, you know, they're probably, I, I think, security yeah, there probably security will be some lighting, but it will be security kind of lighting, too. Yeah. Got to think of the peepers. Yeah. That's total, I mean, you know me and my spring peepers. <laughs> Can't throw off the frogs. <laughs> and there's, I mean, there's, res, there's re, I mean, they're back, back there, but there's residences on that right. side. Right, right. Yeah, there's still a, quite a difference. Uh, and you can see, you know, the highlighted area, the dark green, all that vegetation is not going to is is going to be left under is going to be left undisturbed. So mm -hmm. there is a buffer to the the, the wetland area be, uh, from the building. Um, yeah, but the the lighting will be hooded. You know, we we want to kind of protect the dark sky issues and everything else. So um, and, they, and dumpsters on site is that yes, right? Where right, are those? Right. Over in this area right here. Okay, so we lost that kind of, the other yeah. plan had that little side street, right? Right, it which, had this, I call it a spur, yep. this little spur in here. Which was going to be dumpsters. It also had parking. And snow uh, removal, right? Wasn't that, wasn't that part of the snow removal plan too? Um, well, there's plenty of room for snow removal yep. besides that. Um, Where? We, Where? Um, on, the si on the sides. Of, of the roadways and on the sides of the parking area, we can't put any snow in the rain garden area. Right. Okay. And and so if there's a burden of that, then that will have to be dealt with on an individual storm basis. So, um, but there's sidewalks along the sides of that parking lot there, right? Correct. Okay. So is your plan to put the snow over the sidewalks in the winter, or? Yeah, it'll have to be. Yeah, it'll it'll have to be pushed. From the parking to the sidewalk, and then from the sidewalk to the back of the sidewalk. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because that because the sidewalks are right adjacent to the parking right. area. Right. You know, you're not going to be able to kind of keep snow piled up and right, in, in, uh, separating the parking from the sidewalk. Um, but this was also it made up 
the the 47 or 48 parking spaces this little spur right in here right um, uh, be, because of the building arrangements and everything else I had to kind of read slightly modify the parking area um, to fit the parking within the, the major the major loop right here and everything else okay <clears throat> And I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm looking at uh, section 8.155A <coughs> um, and wondering if this plan meets those requirements. It says parking may be located to the side or rear of the structure. No parking shall be permitted within the required front yard setback of a structure. So the so the front yard setback is actually from the front property line. Uh -huh. right. Right. And so the that's, front property and, line. And how deep is the it's setback? It's not shown on this one. It's about right here. Scale. And how and how deep is the setback? Um, I don't have my zoning book. You do, but if you go to the dimensional section, I'll tell you what the front setback has to be for commercial yeah. properties mm -hmm. before all that dimensions. We have it on the, the detail plans right there. And I think also it uses the term may. Yes, it doesn't it say shall. It says may be located on the side or rear. So which is given the fact that the whole back is wetlands, it's not like right. they don't have any other options. It's right. not like if it was totally open and they had the ability to do that, then that's a different story. But So the front setback is, is 30 feet. We're not in the front yard. No, I know right. you're not. OK, I can't find yeah, the. Just, so 30 feet. So 30 feet is, is right along the edge of the before the parking right begins, here. meaning they comply. <laughs> the um, the dumpsters and trash, and this is just because I'm having a little trouble reading it. Is that is the lines here to denote an actual fencing around it, yes. or so there's it's yes, there will be a screen six foot high six foot screen, okay. screen okay. fence around okay. three sides of it that are facing the street, facing the back, facing the side where the existing park, parking uh, apartments are. Um, in addition to that, we have shown some you know landscaping around that as well. So for screen. Okay. Any other questions from the board? I have one question remaining. This section here that's shown in white on mine and on yours, the, it's an empty white space above the tree. Yeah, what, what is, what's that? Um, that's the um, existing parking area for this, uh, the adjacent um, uh, Blue Guitar oh, it's, uh, place. It's, it's the other this, this, is this building right here. Okay. So they, some of that parking is on this property here, which they've got easements for and everything else. Okay. And, um, Charter communications in the front. Uh, there's yeah. a hair salon in there, yeah. <coughs> and that'll so that's all, all their parking. So that'll all remain the same yes, up there. Correct. Okay, parking. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Anybody from the public have any comments, questions? Yes, sir. I would be very supportive of the committee granting the approval of what. The request is from Mr. David Boyle. He's a very intelligent businessman and he has a good left and right hand architect doing the work. I think the presentation was excellent. I was only concerned about the water and I think I'm satisfied. So my support would be strongly and I mean very strongly in favor of a committee granting his approval. And just think, we're gonna have a new building, extra taxes, and perhaps David could ask the mayor or the mayor rep, whoever it might be, to maybe have an audio system for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You can't, I can't. I like the way you tied that all in. That was very impressive. Thank um, you, Mr. Fedor. All right, duly noted. Anybody else have any comments, questions, ideas about how we can get an audio system in here? Hi, my yes. name is Anthony Gleason. I am an applauder uh, of David in uh, several pieces there. And I haven't had a real good opportunity to see the new plan. I knew what was going on before, but 
I know that if the care that was needed to go into the first plan has gone into this, I'm fully aware. I'm good with it. Uh, my property is at 179 North Hampton Street, across okay. the street from that. Okay. I'm good with this. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Boyle? I just, just want to add one thing. When we came in prior, just um, we had a pre existing non conforming use. So we got a permit from you guys and the zoning board. Um, and that's why we stayed with two buildings at that time. One, one reason. I mean, but when we tore down the motel, the zoning had changed. And as we were on the site, it just became apparent that we should, it's kind of like moving furniture. You, know, you, you, you do it two or three times to get comfortable. And it just seemed to lay out better. And then the, the prices for the first uh, concept, because of the stairwell and stuff, just were not coming in. They weren't cooperating. <laughs> This is going to be um, uh, an easier, a more user-friendly project. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Board, have any questions or comments? I'd like to make a comment that uh, this is an easy process. Every now and then we come across a few of those where things are well put together. Mr. Cannon, thank you. Uh, we appreciate that. It makes our job easier. Um, I'd also like to comment, I mentioned this before, that the, uh, pre the building that was there originally uh, this looks to me to be a significant upgrade, and given that we've gone through our due diligence, which I think we have, I think this is a move up for our community. Jessica, planning, have any questions, comments, concerns? Um, no, but I just want to sort of put it together for everybody that how important zoning is, and um, because of the zoning change and, and how that sort of created more flexibility, that's allowed a better project to come forward, and I think it's important to recognize that even though the zoning is huge and it's hard to weed through sometimes that the details are really are important and it's um, and it really can have a significant impact on the types of projects that the community sees so just to recognize the importance of that so. I, I might be crazy but I seem to recall being in a meeting where we were discussing the move from five uh, it's just a three or something, and I think you were even involved, uh, perhaps, in that discussion, which may have potentially stood against you. And, and so I just, I think you're, uh, you're, you're a good citizen, David. Boyle, <laughs> you're a good citizen. A motion. Oh, um, oh sorry. sorry. Do we need to do we need to do the parking waiver? Well, I guess um, we need to determine as a board whether we think there needs to be a wa waiver. So it. The question. It calls for the 45 spots, and mm -hmm. and I don't think it's clear that it the three handicap spots needs to be three additional or three of but I think that to I've cover always, ourselves I've always interpreted it as adding three right. on because because the way that the the handicap parking is triggered is depending on the number of spaces that are there determines how many handicap parking spaces you need so if it was if there was 39 spaces in the base then only two spaces would have been required but if there's 40 spaces that are required from the zoning then you need three handicapped spaces. So right. I've just always added it on, but I think it's kind of unclear and it could be, it could go either I think way. It's probably better to be safe and yeah. treat it as a waiver. Yeah. Uh, so that's a separate item that's not necessarily a condition, right? We need to. I think we can waive that as part of our motion. To 48, is that what 48 is the requirement? Give me the number specification here. We currently have 47. So spots. 45 is what's required plus three handicap spaces. So there's 48 that would be required. They're presenting 47. So they're asking for a waiver for one space. Okay. But making clear that it's not one of the handicap spaces that's that, been waived. That's, yes, it cannot, they cannot, yeah, I would not. 47 spaces that. including three of those. Waiving being one regular parking space. Yeah, one regular. Okay. I motion to approve the special permit for 184 Northampton Street with a condition that we waive the requirement for one regular parking space. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, give me two weeks to draft the decision. Oh, thank you. Two weeks. That's what I got. That's what the law gives me. <laughs> Good luck, folks. Thank you. All right. Moving right along to the sign ordinance. Okay. All right. Oh, come on. The sign ordinance is the best part. Now the fun. Now the fun begins. Wait for a second, but I'm still no, no. All right, just.
Just give me a minute. Yep. Here. Oh, sure. All right, so I have to take minutes and lead this discussion, so. <laughs> we'll go slowly. <laughs> May I ask what happened to our clerk today? She's uh, not feeling well. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, so. Moving right along. Okay, so this latest and greatest version, which is now draft number three, mm -hmm. um, and I, like I've said, I'm using the track changes, so the stuff that's additions is in red. Um, I'll explain why I added end intent, a 10-1 later on. Um, I, still, I left those definitions for the awning sign, the standing sign, and the wall sign, and I haven't populated it with anything as of yet. Um, I've eliminated the language any illuminated sign under the window sign like we discussed at the last meeting so that's now done. Um, I changed from building inspector to building commissioner to be consistent. Um, I made the changes as we discussed at the last meeting in terms of referring to the scales um, so instead of saying Shelby to a legible engineers scale I've just Limit, uh, deleted that language and just said drawn to scale. So that's for the next three sections. Under processing time permanent issuance, um, I scratched um, incomplete inaccurate. So it just says the building commissioner shall process all signed permit applications within 30 days of the building commissioner's receipt of a complete complete application. I deleted the S and the appropriate fee. So that was the board's recommendation for that. Um, failure to act, we've reversed it now. So instead of with the, um, if no permit's been issued within 30 days, it shall be deemed to be denied. We've now changed that to be approved to make it more consistent with other zoning permits and processes. Uh, permit uh, revocation, so there was an S that was missing, that was added. Um, all of the standards we haven't got to yet, so we're going to jump to the appeals process. And this is really sort of where we got a little bit hung up last time. So I did a little bit of research and I'm throwing different language out there, but we can absolutely do whatever we feel like we want to do here. So mm -hmm. let's just start at the beginning. So appeals, so the ZBA is the special permit authority for all special permits for signs. So circumstances in which a special permit may be sought. So I've added two things here based on our discussion. So one was anyone aggrieved by a decision of the building commissioner in regards to the signed permit may appeal to the ZBA within 30 days of the issuance or denial of the signed permit. So where I'm just a little bit confused is you can, anybody can appeal any decision from the, I mean, that's a, a normal thing and it would automatically go to the ZBA. So it seems like it's duplicating that Unless well, also, I don't think that scenario is a special permit. No. I mean, that's, that's an appeal a, of a building inspector's right. decision. Right. So, so I am feeling like that should not be part of it, but that's how it was crafted the last time we met and we went round and round and round about. Right. So are you thinking just anyone in well, regards we, to the sign permit may appeal to But anybody permit? can appeal a building commissioner's decision yeah. no matter so, what. So it should be anyone. It shouldn't even be in there at all because it's just no, a standard. Just strike the whole. But well, that's what. I'm don't we like this general theory that somebody can come and walk through this one section on signs, and they don't have to go to section ten point nine or whatever and find out that you can appeal any we building inspector. We could. So I mean, that's the that's the flip but it side. Wouldn't, but I don't think it belongs under the section for a special permit. I mean, a special permit is something separate where it doesn't meet the requirements, and you've gone to the ZBA to try to explain whatever our standard is, right? So. Okay. Yeah, so, or or it should say, or this is meant to say, sign permit and not special permit. In regards to the well, it says in regards to the sign permit, yeah. may appeal to the zoning board of appeals. You mean it at ten point oh eight five one? Uh, and to the. Um, That's the special permit granting yeah. authority. Right. Circumstances in which a special permit may be sought. Right. I mean that. So B to me looks like it's a circumstance in which a special permit right. can be Right, and signed. that's sort of where I started heading. So let's just skip A for a second and okay. let's go to B. 
So unusual site conditions that may warrant sign standards not otherwise permitted by this section. And then I threw this in here just for, you know, fun, for kicks, because <laughs> um, I saw this in another ordinance. So it sets restrictions on how much of a deviation from the zoning they can actually grant, which I think was kind of an interesting spin to it. Now, I don't know if these numbers make sense or whether, you know, I, I don't know if it makes sense for our community, but I just, I'm putting it out there for, for a discussion. So any of the following aspects of a permanent sign are eligible for consideration for an exception provided that the maximum allowable deviation is 25% of the requirements. So in sign area, sign height, sign location, on-site only, and copy height, which we don't even have something for copy height, so that's, you know, a question. But, so for sign area, so say somebody says this, because of these strange circumstances of the way that my building is sited or whatever, almost like a variance to some extent in a right. way. That's what we talked about last time, and I think that's kind of the standard to have, is that it's got to be exceptional and unique to the property. It's got to be unique to the property, but then it also limits, so so this is where it, I think, could be problematic, is think of the East Works sign. Right. And that's way bigger than 25% of the deviation of what's allowed under that zone right now. So... But we hope to avoid that by having different standards for that maybe Zone. but that's that's the example that pops into my right. head is there's an ex there's a, there's a situation where we've got again but that district is unique right so i mean i think when we talked about this last time we discussed the idea that if you're if you're giving out sort of exceptions regularly that it's probably a sign that your bylaw isn't written well and that right. where we one of the few things that we have the ability to regulate separately and distinctly is based on the zoning district so we can have a different sign ordinance for the mill industrial different or something standards. like that a, right a different section defining what is and is not permittable there right and so I mean I think it's good to have some sort of exceptional circumstance where you can go to the ZBA and try to make your case but I also think if we're sort of like handcrafting each district their bylaws I don't I have a hard time coming up with something that if you're trying to say it for all of East Hampton, then it's different what you're going to have on, you know, the new sandwich shop versus the side of Eastworks. But right. if you're doing a different requirement for each of those zones, that I mean, my hope is that it's not something that's going to really come up. Right. And I think what we've found a little bit, I'd have to go back. We did. I had Jamie, the assistant planner, do the an analysis at one point. I don't know if I can still find it, but I asked her to look to see how many times somebody came to the ZBA to request a deviation from the sign ordinance um, and what they were asking for. And some of them were completely legit, mm -hmm. odd circumstances. And some of them were just people who just didn't like what they had. And But they had the ability to go to the ZBA and ask for something different. And oftentimes they got it. Right. So that's where I have more of an issue. It's like, if there's standards, there should be some equitable administration of that. And just because somebody doesn't like something, you know, and, and that's sort of the ZBA's fault for, in, in a way, for being like, sure. Well, even something like variances, which have a very high standard, right. depending on which town you're in, they give them out like candy or they exactly. don't. And so I do kind of like the 25% or something yeah. like that, because then even if you're sort of feeling lenient, there's only so much deviation that you're allowed to give. Right. Now, would there be grandfathering for pre-existing signs? Yes, yeah. there always is. So, yeah. something like the East Works would also be covered oh, yeah. by that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, there's, on Pleasant Street right now, so there's East Works and there's Mill 180 that are really, you know, Mill 180 is, is booming. Um, the Keystone buildings, which are actually now two buildings, one of them that has been recently purchased, he doesn't have any signage out there right now. Um, and then at the end, on the other end of Mill 180, there is the um, Three Kingdoms building, which is just warehousing. And I presume at some point in the future, that building will get sold. Right. And it will likely be converted to what's already happening down there. That's, if, that's what my crystal ball says, but right. could be wrong. Um, so, you know, you have to think about, to some extent, that yes, Eastworks would be grandfathered, but then there's this competitive edge yeah. that happens when, so I think the mill district really has to be carefully crafted in terms right. of how, how that is, um, how that's done. 
I think it's hard to, I mean, I like that we're doing sort of the process and procedure stuff before we do the guidelines, but I also think that maybe we'll feel different about the appeal and special permit sure. once we have the guidelines Absolutely. in place. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, maybe it's some, I mean. I'd say leave this in there for now and we'll revisit it. The highlighted portion? Yeah. I think it's a great structure. Yeah, yeah I, like I like it. I like that idea a lot. Okay. I mean, I think that we probably, like, structure-wise, we probably need to separate out the appeal from the special permit. Yeah. But because I think that that's just as likely to be an avenue for an appeal as a special permit, although maybe our bylaw is going to be so crystal clear that no one would ever dispute the building. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so well, I'll, I'll make a note to see if I can find a more appropriate location for that appeal mm -hmm. language, yep. the first bullet or letter or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. All right, so the only thing we're going to be keeping is this unusual site condition. So then here are the required findings. So this helps the ZBA saying, instead of just saying anybody can go to the ZBA and ask for a special permit for a sign, which is essentially what we have now, mm -hmm. it provides at least some guidance to the ZBA on what they can, you know, kind of like you with the special permit, you've got your sort of your checklist, which I think is really helpful yeah. to the board because then they can sort of have guidelines to work off of. So, um, so it's for the findings, there are exceptional or extraordinary conditions applying to the land buildings, uses, or signs involved which do not generally apply to other land buildings or signs in the neighborhood, such as, but not limited to, the presence of illegal non-conforming structure, visual obstructions, unusual building location on site, or unusual building design, architectural style, or historical significance. So that's A. B, the requested signs are consistent with the purpose and intent, which is why I changed an intent to make it, okay, of the sign ordinance. Uh, C, the requested signs are in harmony with the individual building and visually related to the buildings and the surrounding development. And D, the requested signs are not judged to present a safety hazard to vehicular or pedestrian traffic. So it, there's got to be, like, it can't be so strict that it's hard to meet but it can't be too squishy either. So, so I don't know. I feel like this is somewhat middle ground and a happy medium, but the board may want stronger language. Or, uh, go ahead. I was gonna say, C seems the squishiest to me. Mm -hmm. uh, in harmony with is pretty subjective. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if there are other examples of kind of aesthetic. I uh, could only wording. find one bylaw in my research that actually had a finding section. I like the so. I like the idea of something along those lines, but I think it'll be hard when it comes it down also, to it. Also, I mean it starts uh, to get close to the the content based, right? Where yeah, it's like it the look and appearance and I mean all that is technically kind of content now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not it's not it's content if it's based on what the words say. Right, although we get into that weird stuff with like the coloring and things like right, that. Because right, because it, so but it's, well, with branding. So you right. can't say to McDonald's, you can't use your McDonald's colors, or you can't say to Dunkin' Donuts, you can't use that it's right. the purple. Right. 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 I mean, I think the thing is, is that it, <laughs> it really is. It doesn't. It doesn't really give much guidance yeah. to anybody. Yeah. No. It, <laughs> in the top where it says or signs in the neighborhood, I wonder if maybe we should go with or signs in the neighborhood and zone. Should it be and or zone? There are, I mean, there's definitely zoning ordinances and probably and sign ordinances out there that they might not be in a finding section, but that have aesthetic requirements. But we're going to have aesthetic requirements. Yeah. Okay. So you have I to mean, think about you have to think about how is this different from. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is my first time. That's okay. About no, no, this no, no, too, no, no, so no, no. So it's. I mean, that. there will be aesthetic. I mean, if you want to go back just briefly yeah. in the outline. And we've taken all the content out, so we're not, you know, we're not doing real estate signs, we're not doing political signs, all that stuff's got to go. So this is, we've got dimensional standards, we have location, construction, design, so there's illumination, placement, multiple signs. So you're basically saying you can get the special permit, <coughs> but you still can't really override the well, many, the, like, and the all other, of the aesthetic considerations. Well, here's the uh, here's the thing to think about too. So the first one says about um, where is it about the second one B with the purpose and intent. Right. So go back to purpose and intent. Yeah. 
understand why you uh, you said you were going to tell oh, us why okay. you had intent. So Here protect the public health, safety, and general welfare. To protect the rights of individuals and businesses to convey their messages through signs. To improve traffic and pedestrian safety as it may be affected by distracting signs. To promote and protect business viability and economic opportunity. To encourage compatibility and harmony with surrounding buildings, land, and land uses and eliminate excessive and confusing sign display. To ensure the fair and consistent enforcement of sign standards. That's our purpose statement. That's what every. <laughs> I'm serious. They're really good. So that's what. I mean, the what ZBA almost has to go back to that out of harmony. and say. Yeah. An example of a sign that's out of harmony. An example of a sign that's out of harmony. Hmm. Um, a. Now we don't allow billboards, but a a giant billboard that blocks the view of Mount Tom and flashes lights. Oh, get that out. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Yeah. I see it tripping on a lot of other things too, like size limitations. Right, but if you're in the context of a special permit. It Isn't that difficult, you. though, that if they said, this is out of harmony, uh, can't someone say, hey, that's my content, you're messing with my content, I think it's you can't a, I do think that. It's, a, it's a dangerous road to go down, but it's also yeah. kind of the only way that you might create a way to do that. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that might be a vulnerability, but does, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not worth putting I, in I mean, there. the other thing is, like, when I look at the findings, like, under A for this, it's hard to imagine exactly how those findings work because, again, we don't have our guidelines in place. So, like, that really might be something that changes. I mean, I guess I'm imagining, like, a visual obstruction. Like, maybe there are trees in front of a building, and so you can't have a sign against the face that you might be required to in that zone. So you put it perpendicular and hanging, even though that's otherwise not allowed. Like, maybe something like that. But mm -hmm. I can't, it's hard to imagine what those will be until we sort of. Mm -hmm walk down Union Street in your head and think like what are things that might go wrong in some of these buildings or something like that. So I think so what you're saying is correct is that this yeah. is a good base, leave this now, we'll, we'll do the, the guidelines and then apply them as a litmus test to this. Sure, I can just leave it highlighted as red and not accept them at all and just and leave them there. And that will help us form yeah. this into Just to at least remember later. to come back to it. <coughs> do either of you two have anything to add or questions or comments? No? <laughs> <laughs> all right. The long no, process. No, nothing. You were part of the first one, so I thought maybe you might have some good insight. Yeah, well, I was just, uh, I mean, this looks good to me. I was just curious. Good, okay. We're having more fun than we should going through this process, <laughs> but. <laughs> no, that's what I heard. <laughs> but anybody who, I mean, I think the board is really looking for, for guidance from the public, so anything that you see that you want to uh, throw out. I was keeping a close eye out, but I don't see anything. Okay. I mean, I think we haven't Don't. really filled in the nuts and bolts, like the actual standards for the various zones, but we're trying to do this as an open process, and then once it's done, as far as we consider it, I think there's going to be a lot of areas where we're going to have hopefully full public hearings where people speak up and let us know. I mean, it's all sort of what the community wants. It's a balancing test, and so it's going to be public input. Yeah, situations are going to come out of the woodwork that you would have never imagined. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. So I, I, I think there's going to be numerous points along the way where people can hopefully come and help guide us because we're just a handful of people. I like you're really being here today, Clay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This looks really great so far. Thanks. I'm really curious to see how we're going to put in the nuts and bolts because that part know. to me is the really hard part that's like something people with more expertise than myself. And, and, and by yeah, I mean, all I can I really do is you. I can, I can, <laughs> this is my, this is my research stack. Yeah. So all I can do is just keep going back to my research stack and finding things that I think make sense or seem, or take them and then tweak them or, well, you know, so that's, that's how, that's how I write zoning is, right. it's plagiarism. I steal <laughs> from, no, it is. I mean, that's Pretty how good school. zoning is, is written is you, you, people make mistakes and other people take them and fix them. And yeah, they stole so. it first. But I think that the nuts and bolts is the exact part where it's going to be helpful to have public feedback because that's where. Actually, can I ask a question? Sure. There's one thing that I don't completely understand. In the 10.03 section, is that the one thing? Uh, you have the new illuminated sign across the house. Yeah. I'm not fully understanding the what the purpose of that is. Oh, so we had had... Did I not do it right? No, no, that's right. Okay. So la la 
in the last version that we had, it had said any illuminated sign. We are talking about this sort of concept of windows that might be not exactly on the glass, but they're hanging, and they're intended to be directed out. And like, so, like CVS, I think, is a good example where they have, they have all those windows, and then they have like these almost like shades that come down that have you know, what's on sale that week or whatever. And so it's within one foot of the, of the window, so it's considered a window sign. And if it was beyond one foot, then it's more of an interior sign, and we don't really. Right. So and if somebody so decided to hang that type of sign 13 inches back from the window, that would be okay? Well, that, that's, that's sort of the, the kind of example we were thinking of. We, I mean, there are different places that use different numbers, and the idea was trying to figure out what a number would be that is clearly intended to be directed out the window as opposed to, you know, a sign that's placed on a counter inside a cafe and is facing the window, but is clearly intended to be for customers inside the cafe, you know, right. specials or something, right? So you can imagine the scenario where the closer you get, the more it's intended to be directed out. Uh, and so, I mean, again, that's a, I think that's a prime example of where people, we're, we're going to need input if people want it to be 18 inches. I mean, I, I, I find it hard to imagine something that's two feet inside the window that's supposed to go out the window, but maybe we can think of a scenario where that does apply and where we would want to regulate it. Well, like when I saw it, the one thing I was concerned about was all the little flashing open signs. Right. And, and so the reason we took out the illuminated is that we wanted to make sure that it included any kind of sign. And it was yeah. sort it sort of read clumsily to have or illuminated. And so the idea here is this is a broad definition of a window sign. It could be illuminated or unilluminated or anything. And those open signs are something we've talked about already because that poses, I mean, those technically are signs and I think technically under the existing bylaw, I don't know that they're have to go. permitted because they're those, especially the ones that move, right? I don't think we're allowed to have LED signs that move. No. There's a lot of those ones that say open and then they have the little lights that go around them. I don't know that we have them specifically in East Hampton, but you see them in a lot of small businesses. And so, again, trying to figure out how we're going to bring those into the bylaw and then how we would regulate them. So the way it's currently defined is a sign physically adhere to the inside or outside of a window surface. Window signs are not considered primary signs. So for the window sign component, it's good. right now it has to be touching the window either on the inside or the outside to fall under our ordinance. Something that's one inch in but clearly directed out the window, anything goes basically. So the, I think the CVS has, has posed some right. confusion on how the building inspector is supposed to regulate all of those shades that are directed out and he's unclear on whether that he should be including all of that in right. the calculation of what's allowed at that business or and I think he hasn't because because I don't think it falls under because that. it doesn't fall right. under it so you know the question is is that you know in his mind yes it's considered a sign but there's a, there isn't anything he can do about that in terms of calculating all of that signage together mm. In, under that right. one business. Which is a huge illuminated sign. I mean, like. Well, they're not a, illuminated, but they're. Don't they light them up from the inside? No, they might light them up from they the do, inside. But it's all yeah. on the inside, right. so it's hard yeah, to. Yeah, it's, right. yeah, it's just an uplight by thing. So, <laughs> a lot of interesting permutations here that we'll get to explore. I found a typo. Great. Hi, so right, Libby. It's on page three, 10.07, clawing well, signs. Instead of on it, oh and yeah, we want that. to do a find and replace oh, for that. Oh, shock and awe! Because uh, spell check won't catch that, so you might want right. to keep that on your find and replace list. Yep. <laughs> 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 All right. Anybody else have any other questions or comments? Uh, What's next to be added in here, Jessica? Do you know, or are you just gonna? I don't know. Um, it <clears throat> it depends on how much time I can I can yep. dedicate it to it before the next meeting. Um, you know, we'll have an arts coordinator hopefully hired here soon. So let's. My time has been stretched a little bit trying to right. cover some of that stuff. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll probably I'll do as best as I can and as most as I can, and we'll just yeah. just be what it is. But I think now we're starting to head into. Um, well, actually, I probably want to focus on. I might try to flush out the enforcement section. So maintenance and removal, yep. abandoned signs, dangerous and defective signs, and removal of signs. 
and try to finish that section out. Yeah. That sounds good. And then if I can get that done, then I might move up to exempt signs, prohibited signs, and signs on public property. Yep. That and then get good. into dimension all the dimensional all the stuff. Sounds exciting. <coughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you for your input. <laughs> All right. Sign at the end of the um, Any other administrative items? No, but the minutes on that section are going to be weak. I'm just telling you right now. Um, <laughs> There's video. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think there's any other um, items at this time. I did sit on, actually, just to take a few minutes of your time. Um, Actually, I'll put it on the agenda. I'll talk about it next time. It was about ethics and board ethics. I sat on in a webinar about board ethics and stuff. It was Excellent. interesting. So, okay. I motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay, James.